welcome to ED Now Startup Central, India's first and only daily show focused on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Chandra Srikant, joining you from India startup capital, Bangalore. And I'm Krishna Kumar, coming to you live from ET Now's Mumbai studios. First up, our headlines here at ET Now Startup Central, one of Silicon Valley's most candid investors, David McClure of 500 Startups, says that there is nothing to worry about in the Indian startup ecosystem. Just days after Snap Deals co-founder Rohit Bansal cut an optimistic picture about their growth prospects, trouble seems to be brewing for India's unicorn as it battles an employee crisis. And Kavan Mittal of Hike Messenger talks about his growth plans going forward and why he thinks hiring from the Silicon Valley is more appealing. Straight up the big valley voice that we have on the show that uh, Chandra had the pleasure of catching up with. Chandra? That's right, Krishna. We caught up with Dave McClure of 500 uh, Startups, one of the most high-profile investors from the valley. He usually pulls no punches, is very candid. And he was the same in this interview. He was wondering why there's so much of skepticism and pessimism in among Indian investors. Whereas as far as he could see the metrics he tracks, Everything seems to be healthy here and 500 startups is going to make at least 30 to 50 investments in 2016. Let's listen in to what a very candid Dave McClure had to say about the investing environment, about the recent fund that they raised for South Asia. I'm not sure why everyone else is so pessimistic when, you know, if we look at the objectively available metrics, everything's kind of up and to the right. I, I think you have... You know, population uh, rising, very young population. You have smartphone penetration rising. You have payments getting easier. Uh, I think you have a lot more interest from external investors out of Japan, out of China, U.S. and Europe. So, you know, I, I'm not really sure why people have decided that uh, there's something wrong with that type of situation. Uh, I think maybe we're seeing valuations come down a little bit, but. The number of opportunities and the number of talented entrepreneurs coming out of India is just, it's greater than ever before. And uh, I don't know why anybody wouldn't be optimistic. But do you think the pessimism is more, you know, with the late stages, um, uh, with people, you know, who've invested at huge valuations, who, who are just not able to sure. put any more money. But in the early stages, the angel, the series A, we're still seeing money coming in. Yeah. So do you think there's a difference there, that the pessimism oh, yeah. has come in at the later stages, but not so much for the startups per se? Uh, I, I think there's a lot of exuberance for later stage companies and probably the investment multiples were a lot more generous, at least for a period of time, both in the U.S. and maybe internationally that was true. I think some of that sentiment has maybe calmed down and people have come back to you know, sort of normal. Uh, I don't think it's like people are depressed or pessimistic. I think it's just coming back to normal. You know, I, I'd like to say we're focused on investing in a lot of great opportunities, but they have to be real opportunities. And opportunities in which segments? And you know, what is a sweet spot, so to say, in terms of sectors, in terms of industries? Well, I think there's a broad set of opportunities involving software and mobile services that we are very bullish about. Uh, you know, a few sectors, probably financial services, fintech, uh, education and healthcare are areas we've done a lot in. Uh, still basic e-commerce, uh, you know, I think people think e-commerce is a bad word. You know, you told me not to swear on stage. When I say e-commerce, I worry people think that's profanity. <laughs> but I don't think that people buying stuff online is a bad thing. Uh, I think running businesses maybe at negative margin is a bad thing, uh, but I think marketplaces and SaaS businesses are still going to be the bread and butter as well as e-commerce. And what would you say to venture capitalists who are you know, being very cautious now and suddenly talking about cash burn and unit economics after putting in so much money at crazy value? I'm glad they're talking about unit economics now. They should have been doing that all the time, uh, but I think we aren't investing more when the market's hot or less when the market's cold i think we're investing you know a similar amount every year maybe more now because we see the market being developed for and um, are you working with some target on you know how many startups you're going to look at this year or i think we did about 20 investments last year we'll probably do at least that many this year possibly uh, 30 to 50 depending on how quickly we think things are moving uh, but it's really dependent upon finding smart people who are doing uh, good stuff 
A very candid uh, McClure over there. I'm sure that uh, full conversation would be far more fun uh, uh, to uh, watch uh, once uh, Chandra helps us get the video feed of it. Uh, but on that note, uh, let's uh, move on to the other big story that we're attacking over here. Just days after Snapdeal's co-founder Rohit Bansal cut an optimistic picture about their growth prospects, trouble seems to be brewing for India's unicorn as it battles an employee crisis. Customer-centered employees of the firm staged protests alleging that the company was looking to cut jobs on the pretext of putting 200 of them under performance improvement notice, quote-unquote. Now, while Snapdeal claims there have been no layoffs, reports suggest that the company is looking to outsource its customer centre to reduce costs. This comes at a time when companies are looking for ways to improve efficiencies in their business model unit economics. The stress of it all showing as far as uh, one of India's unicorns is concerned and that's exactly what uh, Chandra was uh, chatting with McClure about. Chandra. That's right and I think uh, this is going to come to the fore because you know uh, unicorns, internet companies are under so much of pressure to ensure they run efficient operations so perhaps Flashpoints like these will come to the fore in the next uh, few months, something that we will have to prepare for. Mm. But uh, moving on, another big voice on the show, Bharti Group Sion uh, Kaman Mittal, who is also the founder and CEO of Hike Messenger, uh, spoke to us not just about, you know, Hike making hires in Silicon Valley, but about the recent differential pricing norms. Now, Krishna, this is going to be, you know, a grand irony because Kaman Mittal says TRAI has to fix loopholes in those norms otherwise telcos will find a way to abuse them considering this is coming uh, from the son of bharti airtel promoter i mean it's some conversation you have to listen to this there's a lot of very smart people in india possibly more than the world the difference is that this is the first wave of the internet in the country so not a lot of people are as exposed to people in the west who build scalable businesses so bringing people from the West allows us to buy a couple of years of time because we don't reinvent the wheel on a lot of stuff that they may have already done. That may be technology, that may be management practices, that may be how you run the company, which is why we've been trying to make some key hires from the US. Our latest one uh, is our new head of engineering, Rajesh, who's joined us from Google Motorola. What is all this a precursor to? You know, are you preparing Hike for a much bigger push, not just India, but apply your learnings here and you know take Hike to other markets as well? How do you get a billion people onto the internet? That's our first mission, first task. And that's going to take a long time. So our focus is purely India right now. And the question is, how do you learn from all the stuff that we do last year and, you know, and apply to this year in the next couple of years? Right. And um, considering, you know, there is still some ambiguity with respect to regulation around OTT. I know the recommendations came out last week. But is that the last of it? Is there more certainty now for products such as yours? What's honestly very good is that we sort of have a level playing field. A lot of folks don't realize that we've been at the opposite end of this, where all our competitors have had these special packs dedicated towards the services, but Hike has not, despite that we've grown to 100 million users. So it's good to see, you know, try come out and say no differential pricing. There are a couple of loopholes that are not clear. What we'd love to see in the next couple of weeks is even those loopholes get cleared so that we know as a market where we stand. The loopholes you're referring to is the whole intranet um, uh, window that they've given. Is, is that worrying? You know, uh, can that be uh, abused by a few networks that have extensive intranet? The simple idea is that telco should not decide. It should be an open market. Um, and if you have this loophole, it gives rooms to telcos to decide. Um, it's definitely very tedious to do it, but there is a way. There is a back door. So ideally speaking, you don't want those back doors either. You recently crossed the 100 million uh, user milestone. Is 200 million user going to be that much easier? You know, perhaps, you know, will you complete that in a year, in, an, in under a year? What kind of goal are you setting for that number? You know, 100 million in three years is pretty incredible. I don't think we thought we'll get there as fast as we did. Um, but it's never been about the numbers. It's never been about the valuation. All we focus on is, what problem are we solving in the market? Is hike, does hike really deeply mean something to people? And if that you know, happens, um, the numbers go up. So our goal for this year again is to figure out how can we improve on all the problems we're solving? And by the way, are there more problems we can solve? The answer is yes, there's a very long list. And you'll see us launch a lot of these things this year.
powerful voices on the show today but that brings us uh, to uh, today's edition of ET Now Startup Central. We hope you certainly enjoyed the show but now it's over to you Krishna. Chandra, the irony of it all is so visible in that conversation. You know, that you need a level playing field and telcos <laughs> should not be able to decide content and that loophole in differential pricing norms coming from none other than Kavin Bharti Mittal says it all. On that note, we wrap things up here on ET Now Startup Central, but don't go anywhere, keep watching ET Now. But coming up next is a special edition of Markets Tomorrow. Keep in mind, tomorrow is the last day of trading before the all-important budget on Monday. You don't want to miss this edition of Markets Tomorrow. Keep watching ET Now. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.